welcome back. Here we're going to do the same idea as part one video. But now we're going to select the uh, relative geometries to each one of the small magnets we created here uh, according to the image of the second configuration you can see right now. Very good. And then we are going to apply each one of these geometries to the relative coordinate system we created in order to simulate the magnetic field around the, the, the coil, not the coil, the circle here, both 2D and 3D dimensions and see the Halbeck array system working as we see in the image. So what we want here is a flow field to follow these direction, the Y direction, for example, to follow in the middle only one exclusive direction. So let's follow up creating the re relative coordinate system. I'm going to do one and then follow up the video so you can see the results quicker. Very good. So as we have in the picture, let's create a bird one. Very good. Downwards one. Very good. Then what we have here. Okay, so this should be good, very well. So all I have here, we have the global coordinate system. Now we're going to assign for each one of the rectangles, which one of the magnets, the direction of the flow, according to the image. I'm going to do the first one here. So this one goes downwards. So let's select it to the downwards. So we can see here the small coordinate system the right in the middle of it has the X direction going down. You might not be able to see the color of it. It should be green. This is the X direction. Very good. Then I'm going to follow up creating the other ones and quick up the video again. Very good. Now that we have applied to each one of the geometries the respective coordinate systems, we can now go into the creating of the frontier, the, the bounder layer, the bounder uh, frontier of it in order to do the simulation in this zone of influence. So we can go with the same idea we did before. We follow up creating, let's say, a square starting up in the minus uh, 50 millimeters on the X direction. The same goes to the Y direction as well. Minus 50 and the Z direction keeps up with zero. Now we apply 100 in every one of the directions, both X and Y. Very good. Now we have the square, we select edges, and then as we've done this, we have done this already, but I'm going to repeat it for you. Very good. Now we can go apply a boundary and go to Benoit. This will be the frontier of the system. Very good. Okay, select this. Oh, okay, it's like a boundary, select like objects again, so we can select the objects in the screen. Very good. We make it transparent. Let's put it all transparent. Now we can do the simulation here already after we create a setup. I'm going to do the simulation of the flux line around uh, the 2D dimension, and then I'm going to the, and also the vectors of the magnetic field, and then I'm going to the 3D dimensions as well. So let's, let's start here. Uh, but first, I'm going to create the 3D design of it, following up the same idea, 10 millimeters, very good. Then I'm coming back to the Maxwell 2D design, which is we're in. And now I'm going to create the setup of it. Let's keep it default. Very good. And then following up with the validation, seeing if something is wrong. So it's saying the boundaries and excisions, there's something here. Oh, uh, no excision of value, boundary, or permanent magnet or magnetization. Very well. I will select the uh, Oh, okay. I know what's going on. We have here, we haven't assigned any kind of uh, material to the, to the geometry here. We have to do that in order to simulate any kind of magnetization. Um, and the software was telling us that. 
So let's go up. Oops, something happened. Yeah, okay, good. So now, yeah, now it's going to work properly. See, everything's okay. So let's go to analyze and see what the mesh gives us. What, when I say mesh, is the numerical solution being done inside of this zone of influence here. The zone of influence, it's uh, uh, divided in many specific geometries and these geometries, they are separated by elements and these elements, they are called mesh. Very good. So everything's okay, normal completion. And then we go to control Control A as well, select all the geometries in it, go to field, and let's see the fluxes first. It's very good to see the fluxes first. Flux line, all objects, very good. Okay, so now we see a very different pattern from the other help array system we saw before. We see a polarization between the left side and the right side, and in the middle, it keeps in the middle uh, flow line. And we can see here, if we zoom it up, we can see the very um, very uh, constant lines in the middle of it. And it goes with the idea we we see in the picture. So we have constant lines with the same magnitude. You can see when you say the same magnitude is because when you see the lines, it's not quite visible here though. But I think you can see it's, it's kind of green. Let's change to a different color. We can put it in a gray color. I think that, that would be better. No, it's not better. Okay, let's keep it up the way it was. Uh, it's rainbow one. Very good. Okay. So the idea here is uh, the, the distance between each one of the lines uh, show us if the, the 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 how strong the lines, the magnetic field in them are. And by saying that, if we have like a very greenish line in the center and it doesn't change colors, we have the same the same amount of uh, flux line going in this direction here, which in the line, in the magnetic field view, we're going to see that the, the whole field is uniform in this direction. Let's just cancel the view of the, the flow lines and then go to the field overlays, open field, and then let's create the magnetic vectors of the fields for all objects in it. So this is good, we already have an image here. Good, this is great. So you can see a little bit of um, mixing here in the bottom, but you can see that most of it, the vectors, they start right here in the bottom. Even though there's there are some mixes here, you can see that they cancels out because they're both coming from, uh, there's a symmetry uh, axis here and they come from uh, uh, opposite sides. So they're all canceling out and all that it's resulted from that are those uh, straight uh, green arrows here. And they show the same as the image. Of course, here you have many arrows. The image is simplified. But what you have here for this Outback array system is that all of the lines, all of the, the vectors of the magnetic field, they follow this very specific, specific direction here as the North Pole of it. So very good. We have what we wanted. Let's follow up with the 3D view so we can simulate it and see what happens as well. See, since I have done all of the of the of two simulations there and we only have to do and I want to see them the since we have done two simulations before of the tree I need and when I say I need is that I only need to do the vectors, the flow line. I want to I just want to show you guys the, the flow line, uh, the, the vector, uh, and when I say, okay, so here we are in the 3D view. Very good. I'm going to create, uh, let's change to the, the tree area and then and this one. So I need to create a setup as well. I need to validate it. The boundaries, they're not okay because of the same problem we had before. So let's create the boundary for all of the, let's see, let's do like this. I want to hide the selection. I'm going to select it all. Very good. Assign material. This is way faster. 
Very good. Okay. Something happened. No, we are fine. Very good. So I'm going to show it again and let's see if it's validated. Very good. I'm going to create another setup, including what I have just done and initialize the mesh. Okay, so we have it, uh, the, the mesh completed, and then let's follow up with uh, the simulations here. I'm gonna put in the, the last part of the report. I'm, go, I'm doing this for university, as I have told, uh, as I have said before in the last video. And then I'm gonna put like the the other, the same fields uh, I simulated before in here as well, but I'm not gonna do it in this video. I'm gonna put it only in the report because it's the same procedure. Right now, I'm only simulating the the magnetic uh, uh, the magnetic uh, magnitude. So let's go with the all objects again, and here we can keep it all default. Very good. So now we have the magnitude. This is very good. It's a bit heavy. We can we can simulate it in only one plane if we want. We can do that. So I'm going to do that to keep it up a bit less heavy than it is right now. But for now, you can see already that it has a very constant um, magnetic uh, field in the center of it. And outside, it's quite neutral or very, very slow. Uh, very, very low, my bad. But let's see in a different uh, perspective here. Uh, we can choose the plane. Let's say this the XY plane. It's good to see the magnetic uh, magnitude, magnetic field magnitude in it. Then we click on the fields and then we go to magnetic magnitude the magnitude of the flow and then we can see it here so what we have here we have a very bluish strong blue in this in the outside of it and a very green in the inside of it if we put transparency into the the into all of these if we put some transparency in it Hold on. We can see that it's green on the bottom as well. Besides some uh, very low differences here, but they're due to numerical simulation. That is not quite accurate, but enough for us to see what's happening. Very good. Let's go to the last uh, configuration of the magnetic Hellback array system of the new diamagnets. magnets. 